In this class, I'm going to explain uh, about database stored procedures and how you can invoke them using JDBC from Java. So, I have a stored procedure here. It's a very simple stored procedure. There's a table called products and in that table, I have a column called supplier ID. So, I want to find all the count of the products for a given supplier ID. This is a very simple stored procedure. So basically all it is doing is select count star from products where supplier ID is whatever you pass. So this is a stored procedure. So I'm first dropping the procedure and then I'm creating it. Okay. So a procedure is like uh, a method in, in like Java. It takes some inputs and some outputs. So the input parameters are sent are via via this in in keyword, and I'm saying that sub ID is a input parameter, and it's of type integer type, and this method returns an integer output that can be accessed with the name total, and it is of type output parameter. So what I'm doing is I I run this query where I get the count star from products where supplier ID is what you're passing as input and store that into total. Okay. And since the uh, delimiter for SQL statement is semicolon, while creating this stored procedure, we have to change that delimiter. So we say delimiter dollar dollar. So that means this proce this statement ends when it encounters dollar dollar as the end of the line. So this whole procedure starts from here to till this point. And after creating the procedure, we reset the delimiter back to semicolon. So the way to create this procedure is you log in from MySQL. So I log in into MySQL from the command prompt and then I use the Northwind database and then I execute this file which is contained in count products by supplier.sql. To execute that file, the command here is to say source and give the full path to that file. And when I press enter, there are two statements in there. The first statement will drop the existing procedure and recreate it. So I see two statements called query ok, query ok. The first one is for dropping the procedure and the second one is for creating the stored procedure. Okay, now that the procedure is created, I can call that procedure by using what is called as a call statement. I can say call count products by supplier. I'm passing supplier ID as 8 and my output, I want it to be stored in this parameter called as total. So you have to say at the rate total. Okay, then I'll press enter. So the procedure ran fine. Now I'm going to select this variable called total. Now I see that it contains 4. So if I run that query, select count star from products where supplier ID equal to 8, I should get 4. Same thing I'm getting from the stored procedure as well. So with stored procedures, uh, what you can do, you can have control flow statements inside the stored procedure as well. So MySQL provides if statement, for statement, while statement, you can put all that in the body of your stored procedure. And it can take input parameters and output parameters. And you can also do transaction management inside the stored, stored procedure. So you can execute a set of statements and then if something bad happens, you can roll back the transaction or commit the transaction. So it supports exception handling as well. So, but in this uh, class, I'm not going to explain the details of the stored procedures. I'm only going to explain how you can call these stored procedures from Java using JDBC. So let's look at an example program at how we can invoke this stored procedure. So I'm connecting to my, the URL for my database is the MySQL server which is on my local machine and the database I'm using is Northwind. 
it contains a table called products so if I go into the products I should see that there is a column called supplier ID so I get I retrieve a connection if I if the connection cannot be retrieved I just exit from the program then I create this callable statement and in that I pass I say call the name of the procedure and two parameters that are bound in subsequent statements the first one is a supplier ID so the first one is a supplier ID and the second one I'm registering it as an output parameter and of type integer so whatever I'm calling here if you notice I had called the same thing when I executed the stored procedure from the command line so I say call the stored procedure name and then I pass the first parameter which is 8 which is a supplier ID the second parameter is is the argument in which I'm going to store the output of that stored procedure so here I'm registering that second parameter as a integer and of to and I'm and I'm saying that it is a output parameter then I execute the query and then after executing the query I can since I have registered the second parameter as an output parameter and of type integer I can retrieve that as an int value and that would be the product count and then I print out the product count for the supplier ID is this product count and then I do all my catching the exceptions and closing the callable statement so I close the callable statement over here so now let's run this run, run this program run as Java application and in the console I see product count for supplier ID 8 product count for supplier ID 8 is equal to 4 product count for supplier ID 8 is 4 so this is how you invoke stored procedures from Java using JDBC. In this class I'm going to explain how you can use the system class in Java. So the system class in Java has some useful methods uh, like array copy which is used to copy a source array into a destination array and we can specify the length from the source array uh, to copy into the destination array and you can also specify where in the destination array you want to store it and from which position in the source array you want to copy into the destination array so this is how you do that uh, you can get all any environment variables which are on the command line so if I have an environment variable on the command line called username I can access that username from the system property by using get env I can also access all the system properties that you see on the Windows command line by running the set command so all the system properties you can access this by calling the get env and that will give you a map of the system variables and values as strings so you can iterate over this map and print all of them so and, the, and then you can get a uh, all the system properties as key value pairs by calling the get properties the security manager may not let you see all the values of all each of these system properties but you can individually see the value of every of each of these system properties like file separator line separator the path separator and so on the OS name OS version the Java class path all these you can retrieve individually and all these will vary from one operating system to other so on on Windows the file separator is backslash on Linux it is forward slash the line separator is backslash R backslash in on Windows and just backslash in on Linux then the path separator is semicolon on Windows and colon on Linux and if there are any command line arguments that are passed you can access the, those over here so if you open the run dialog and 
I'm going to pass who am I as a value Sujit. So I should be able to access that over here. So who am I will print will get printed as Sujit. I can explicitly call the garbage collector by calling system.gc and the system of, of class has three objects called dot in, uh, in, out and err. In is the standard input. The file descriptor for standard input is zero. Then one is standard output and two is standard error. And I can read from the standard input by using the scanner class. Then I can print a standard output by using the system.out and I can print a standard error by using system.err. System.err will by default go to the console until unless you redirect it. And then I can get the current time in milliseconds since Jan 1, 1970 by invoking system.currentTime in millis and then I can create a date object from that and print that current date. I can also access the max memory that is assigned to the system by using the runtime.getRuntime.max memory and I can increase the max memory by passing a command line argument called dash xmx 1024mm which means 1024 megabytes or 1 gigabyte so the program can expand up to 1 gigabyte of memory and I can print that over here I can also print the total memory that is being consumed by the system right now and I can ex exit from the program 0 means a successful and non-zero means abnormal termination and after the program has ended I can check this on Unix by printing dollar question mark and by printing the error level on Windows. So let's run this program. Run as Java application and you can see that it is waiting for the standard input for an integer value so I'm going to enter 3 and here you see that the system.err comes out in red. By default the error standard error goes to the console and then here I'm printing the total memory the, the maximum mem memory which is 1 gig. I'm also printing the total memory that is being consumed by the system right now which is 16 MB and who am I is the system property that I have passed from the command, from the command line arguments from the program arguments and that is coming out as Sujit. Then I have printed a Java class path. Let me expand this. I have printed the file separator, the line separator. It is going into a new line because it indicates a new line character. The OS name and the OS version. Okay, And here I am printing all the system properties. The keys are shown but the values are not shown because of the security manager. Then I'm printing all the environment variables and here I'm printing a single environment variable and then I have copied one array, three elements of a source array into a destination array and I'm printing those over here. And I can run the same program from the command line and redirect the standard output on the standard error. So what I do is I come here and I can pass the system arguments, system properties by saying dash d who am I equal to Sujit and then I this is my the full path to this class and then I'm redirecting the standard output to the file called out and the standard error to a file called err. Putting one in front of the standard output is optional so you don't have to specify that. So if when I run this I'm going to enter the standard input It's a, that is waiting to read an integer value. So I'm going to enter 3 here. And now if I open the out file, I'll see all the output that I see, that I see in the Eclipse console. But I, I, don't, I don't see the standard error being printed to this file because I've redirected the standard error to a different file. But the rest of the things like entering the integer input, who am I, the Java class path, everything gets printed here. So let's open the ERR file and I can see the standard error to which the, the statement I printed to standard error going into a different file 
because I redirected the output by using 2 greater than ERR. 2 is a file descriptor for standard error. So I redirected that output. So this video explains how you can use the system class in Java.